So in this video, we're going to learn how to solve a system of linear equations using a method called substitution. So what we want to remember is that when we're solving a system of equations, we're trying to find the point at which these two lines cross. So we're trying to find an x and y value or an x and y coordinate point that satisfies both of the equations. So let's take a look at number one. So for number one, we have the lines y equals 2x plus 1 and the line y equals negative 3x plus 11. So when we're using the method of substitution, what we want to do first is isolate one of the variables in either equations. And this problem actually already has one of the variables isolated. So if we look at the top equation, we have y by itself. We also have it isolated in the second equation, but we'll just use the top equation for now. So we have the y isolated, we have the y by itself. So we get to skip the first step of this method. So now what we want to do is we want to think about what this first equation is saying. This first equation is saying that y is equal to 2x plus 1. And we're trying to find an xy pair that satisfies both equations. So if y is equal to 2x plus 1 in our first equation, y also must be equal to 2x plus 1 for our second equation. So we are going to substitute that expression in from the first equation into our second equation. So we're going to rewrite our second equation. And instead of a y on the left side, we're going to substitute in that expression 2x plus 1. And this is equal to negative 3x plus 11. And now we have one equation with one variable, so we can solve for that variable or solve for x. So now we're just going to solve this equation. So let's add 3x to both sides. On the left side, we have 5x plus 1. And on the right side, we have 11. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides of our equation. We're left with 5x on the left and 10 on the right. And finally, divide both sides of our equation by 5 to get that x is equal to 2. So we've got our first half of our solution, which is x is equal to 2. But remember, we need an x and y value, so that satisfies both of these equations. So now we're going to pick either equation. So I'll just pick the first equation, which is y equals 2x plus 1. And instead of x, we want to replace it with the value we just found for x. So we're going to have y equals 2 times our value of x, which is 2, plus 1. And now we're going to simplify this to find our y value. So 2 times 2 is 4, so we have 4 plus 1. So we get that y is equal to 5. So we get x equals 2 and y equals 5 is our answer. And we could write this as a coordinate point, 2, comma, 5. Let's take a look at example 2. So example 2, we have y is equal to 5x minus 2. And then we have negative 3x plus 6y is equal to negative 12. So again, what we always want to do first is see if either of our variables are isolated in either of our equations. Well, again, we have our y isolated, so we get to skip that first step of substitution, which we'll talk about in the next couple problems. So we know that y is equal to 5x minus 2. So what we want to do is take this expression for y from our first equation, plug it in for y in our second equation. So our second equation is going to become negative 3x plus 6. And instead of y, we're going to replace it with this expression for y, 5x minus 2. And this is going to be equal to negative 12. And now we want to solve this equation for x. So we're going to start by distributing this positive 6. So positive 6 times a positive 5x, we're going to get a positive 30x or plus 30x. We multiply a positive 6 by a negative 2, we get a negative 12 or a minus 12. And this is equal to negative 12. Now we want to combine like terms. So we're going to combine negative 3x plus 30x, which will give us 27x. So we have 27x minus 12 equals negative 12. We're going to add 12 to both sides of our equation. On the left side, we're left with 27x. On the right side, negative 12 plus 12 is just 0. And finally, we're going to divide both sides of our equation by 27. On the left side, we're left with x. And on the right side, 0 divided by anything is 0. So we get that x is equal to 0. And now we need to find our y value. So we're going to plug our x value into either of our initial equations and solve for y. 
The first equation is definitely easier because the y is already by itself. So we're going to use the first equation, which is y equals 5x minus 2. And again, we want to replace this x with the x value we just found. So we're going to say y is equal to 5 times our x value of 0 minus 2. And now we're going to simplify. So y is equal to 5 times 0 is 0, so 0 minus 2. And 0 minus 2 is just negative 2. So we get that y is equal to negative 2. So we get x is equal to 0 and y is equal to negative 2, which again can be written as the coordinate point 0, comma, negative 2. So if we take a look at example 3, we have x plus 2y is equal to 8, and we have 3y plus 4x is equal to 2. And you may notice that we don't have either variable isolated in either equation. So we actually have to start by isolating either variable, so either x or y, in either of our two equations. But we want to think about which variable is going to be the easiest to isolate and in which equation. So if you look at the first equation, we have an x that doesn't have any number in front of it. So it's going to be pretty easy to get this x by itself because we just have to get rid of this plus 2y on the left side of our equation. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go down here, or actually to the right, we're going to have x plus 2y equals 8. And our goal is to isolate x. So we're going to subtract 2y from both sides of our equation. So we get that x is equal to 8 minus 2y. So we basically just changed our first equation into this new equation, which is x equals 8 minus 2y. And now this is telling us that x is equal to 8 minus 2y. So what I want to do is substitute that expression for x into my second equation. So I'm going to have 3y plus 4 times my expression for x, which is 8 minus 2y, is equal to 2. And now I'm going to use this equation to solve for y. So I want to start by distributing this 4. So 4 times 8 is 32. And 4 times negative 2y is going to give me a negative 8y. And then I have a 2 on the right side of my equation. And now I'm going to combine like terms. So I'm going to combine the 3y and the negative 8y to get negative 5y plus 32 is equal to 2. I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides of my equation. On the left side, I have negative 5y. On the right side, 2 minus 32 is negative 30. And finally, I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by negative 5. On the left side, I'm left with a y. And on the right side, negative 30 divided by negative 5 is going to give me a positive 6. So I get that y is equal to positive 6. And now we are going to use that value of y to find a value of x. So we can plug in y into any of our initial two equations or this new equation that we made by just manipulating the first equation. So I'm going to use the start equation because it's going to be the easiest. So we know that x is equal to 8 minus 2y. So we want to replace y with the value of y that we just found. So we're going to have x equals 8 minus 2 times the value of y that we just found, which is 6. So x equals 8 minus 2 times 6 is 12. And 8 minus 12 is negative 4. So we get that x is equal to negative 4. y is equal to 6. And we can write this as the point negative 4, comma 6. If we take a look at example 4, we have 2y minus 4x is equal to negative 10 and negative 5y plus 3x is equal to 4. So again, we don't have either variable isolated in either of our two equations, so we have to start by doing that. Now all of our variables have a number in front of them, so it's going to be a little bit harder to isolate, but we still want to think which variable is going to be the easiest. So if we look at the top equation, we have 2y minus 4x is equal to negative 10. Because negative 4 and negative 10 are both divisible by the 2 in front of the y, it's going to be easiest to try and isolate the y in this first equation. So that's what we're going to do. So over here, we have 2y minus 4x is equal to negative 10. So we want to add 4x to both sides of our equation. So we have 2y is equal to 4x minus 10. And now we want to divide everything by 2. So we're going to divide every term by 2. So we're left with y on the left side. 
4 over 2 is 2, so we get 2x. Negative 10 over 2 is negative 5. So we get y is equal to 2x minus 5. So now we know that y is equal to 2x minus 5, and that came from our first equation. So what we want to do is take that expression that we found for y, plug it in for y in our second equation. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to have negative 5 times this expression 2x minus 5 plus 3x is equal to 4. And now we're going to solve this equation for x. We're going to distribute the negative 5. So negative 5 times 2x is negative 10x. Negative 5 times negative 5 is a positive 25. And we have a plus 3x. And this is equal to 4. We're going to combine the negative 10x and the 3x to get negative 7x plus 25 is equal to 4. We're going to subtract 25 from both sides of the equation. On the left side, we're left with negative 7x, and on the right side, we have negative 21. And finally, we want to divide both sides by negative 7 to get the x by itself. On the left, we're just left with x. On the right, negative 21 divided by negative 7 is going to give us a positive 3. So we get that x is equal to positive 3. And now to solve for y, we need to plug our value of 3 in for x into any of our either initial equations or this manipulated one over here on the right. And we're going to use the manipulated one because it's going to be easier. So we're going to have y equals 2x minus 5. And then we want to replace this x with the x value we found. So we're going to say y is equal to 2 times our x value of 3 minus 5. And we're going to simplify this. So 2 times 3 is 6. So we have 6 minus 5. And 6 minus 5 is 1. So we get that y is equal to 1. So we get x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 1, which can be written as the point 3, comma 1. Let's go through some more examples. So for these last two examples, I encourage you guys to pause the video and try them on your own. And then you can unpause the video and watch me work through them to make sure that you solve them correctly. So if we take a look at number 5, we have negative 3y is equal to negative 3x plus 12. And we have negative 4x minus 6y is equal to negative 16. So we need to start by choosing a variable to isolate. And if we look at the first equation, it's going to be pretty simple to isolate y because we just need to divide both sides of our equation by negative 3. So we're going to do that over here on the right. So we have negative 3y is equal to negative 3x plus 12. To isolate y, we're going to divide each term by negative 3. On the left side, we're left with a y. On the right, negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. So we have 1x, which is the same as x. And positive 12 divided by negative 3 is going to give us a negative 4. So we know that y is equal to x minus 4. So now, we know that y is the same as x minus 4. So we can replace y in our second equation with x minus 4. So that's what we're going to do next. So we have negative 4x minus 6 times our expression for y, which is x minus 4, is equal to negative 16. And now we're just going to solve for x. So we're going to start by distributing this negative 6. Negative 6 times x is negative 6x. And negative 6 times negative 4 is plus 24. And this is equal to negative 16. We're going to combine like terms. Negative 4x minus 6x is negative 10x. So we have negative 10x plus 24 is equal to negative 16. Subtract 24 from both sides of our equation. We're left with negative 10x on the left. Negative 16 minus 24 is going to give us a negative 40 on the right. And finally, divide both sides of our equation by negative 10. And we get that x is equal to 4. And now we need to find y. So we're going to use this equation that we manipulated where we know that y is equal to x minus 4. So we have y is equal to x minus 4. We want to replace x with the value we just found for x. So y is equal to our x value of 4 minus 4. And 4 minus 4 is 0. So we get y is equal to 0. 
So we got that x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 0, which again, we can write as the point 4 comma 0. So looking at our last example, we have 5y minus 4x is equal to 18 and 6x plus 3y is equal to 36. So we need to figure out which variable is going to be the easiest to isolate. And if we look at the second equation, it's going to be easiest to isolate this y because the 6 in front of the x and the 36 are both divisible by this 3 that's in front of the y. So when we actually isolate y, we're not going to end up with fractions, which is going to make our lives easier. So over here, we're going to take 6x plus 3y equals 36, and we're going to isolate our y. We're going to start by subtracting 6x from both sides of our equation. So we get 3y is equal to 36 minus 6x. We're going to divide both sides of our equation by 3, so we're going to divide every term by 3. On the left, we're left with y. 36 divided by 3 is going to give us 12, and negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2, so we get negative 2x. So we get that y is equal to 12 minus 2x. So now we need to substitute. So we manipulated our second equation this time, and it told us that y is equal to 12 minus 2x. So we want to take that expression and plug it in for y in our first equation. So we're going to take our first equation, and instead of y, so we're going to have 5 times our expression that we just found for y, which is 12 minus 2x, minus 4x is equal to 18. And now we're going to solve for x. So we're going to distribute the 5. So 5 times 12 is 60. 5 times minus 2x is minus 10x. We have a minus 4x is equal to 18. And now we want to combine like terms. So we have 60 and minus 10x minus 4x is going to give us a minus 14x. And this is equal to 18. We're going to subtract 60 from both sides of our equation. We're left with a negative 14x on the left. 18 minus 60 gives us a negative 42 on the right. And we're going to divide both sides by negative 14 to get that x is equal to positive 3. And now we're going to take this equation that we manipulated. So we know that y is equal to 12 minus 2x. And we're going to use it to solve for y. So we want to replace the x with the x value we just found. So we're going to have y is equal to 12 minus 2 times our x value of 3. And we're going to simplify to solve for y. So we get y is equal to 12 minus 2 times 3 is 6. And 12 minus 6 is 6. So we get that y is equal to 6. So we got that x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 6, which can be written as the point 3 comma 6. So hopefully this video helped you guys learn how to solve linear systems by using substitution. What you need to remember is that you want to start by isolating one of the variables. Then you're going to substitute that expression in for that variable in the other equation. You're going to solve for the first variable and then use that to solve for the second.